I could hear like all of the amazing things you were saying, but it was paused and I was like, no. You're too kind, um, man. Too kind. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And like I said, you are a trailblazer. And you. you are definitely, you're right. There have to be people that are positive around you that are willing to tell you and encourage you. Sure. Those things. Um, and let, me, let, let me ask you a question, you know, and I think that, you know, you have sort of the same experience in regards to leaving out of here. Did you feel like a minority in Florida? Did you feel- Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, that that's something that I talk to my students about is, you know, we, we're insulated from a lot of that. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a foreign concept to be a a minority in the true sense of the word in this area, because of the fact that it's so homogenous demographically. That's Um, a perfect word for you, right? (laughs) You know, and, and, and admittedly it's become a lot more diverse and I think that's beautiful and I love it. I love it. That was one of the things that I love the most about being able to go to California and Florida and, um, experiencing other cultures, but just as you mentioned, you know, you really didn't see a lot of that when we were growing up here. Yes. And there's a lot more of it. And I hope that that continues to increase in terms of the diversity in the area, but even so we're still a vast majority Mexican Americans in this area. And so when you leave, you, you have that, you know, you, you have an idea of being a minority, but you don't have the feeling of, uh, and I don't know if this is the appropriate word to utilize or not, but the feeling of being other. Yes. You know, to, to ride your coattails and to understand that there's different races and different people and, and people are human, you know, and I, I was always and just very close minded of some of our ancestors past. Like, hey, you know, um, white people, this white people. I tell you what, white people are awesome. <laughs> you know, I, I had a buddy who his mom would make, you know, and I'd stay over the holidays, you know, cookies and milk. It was one of those very, you know, and you learn to take people as they are. And for me, it was very good to to sort of jump in the melting pot and really just experience people from all different walks of life that help shape you, whether you believe it or not, it does shape your views of on this world. And, and I think it would help everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I, I love the fact that the Valley has so much to offer if you stay here, but contrarily, I also think it's important for people to go out and experience the other areas of the world, other areas of the United States and bring back that yes. type of, of viewpoint or bring back those experiences to the Valley. So that, as you mentioned, you know, sometimes we do tend to be a little bit closed minded because of the fact that we've just been here. Yes. And if you leave, then you expand your horizons and you're able to really appreciate what you have at home, as you mentioned, and, you know, you bring back that understanding and you bring back those different ideas. My best friend, one of my best friends in, in Los Angeles was from Armenia. Um, and it was awesome. so interesting. Yeah, it was just so interesting to, I mean, at that point I had, I wasn't a geography teacher. I didn't know where Armenia <laughs> yeah. was. And she's like, the Caucasus Mountains. And I'm like, what? Where is that? You know? um, and now, I mean, I know, but. Uh, it, it was so beautiful to learn her culture and to be able to experience, you know, her family and drinking coffee out of a coffee cup that's this big and drinking everything. And then she's like, no, you don't drink the grounds. I was like, I thought it was gritty. <laughs> hey, I don't <laughs> you know your friend, but from what I hear, very good looking people in Armenia. Oh my God, for right. sure. Right. For sure. Like gorgeous people. I mean, there's gorgeous people of every, yeah. of every ethnicity, but like, oh yes. Armenians and Latinos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're very, you know, let me ask you a question. Have you ever found it odd, or not odd, but, you know, the more and more people that I talk to, and I have been very fortunate to have friends from all different types of races, but um, everyone has some form of a tortilla. <laughs> so you know, you everyone has some form of a tortilla, you know. You know, it, it's a, I always found that as a fun fact. <laughs> like, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's so funny. It's, it's so it's and you're right everybody does everybody yeah. does you know i'm thinking about like I, I my friends in florida that were colombian my friends in florida that were 
Um, I, I had friends that were like hardcore Irish, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's just, it's so interesting, um, to experience all of that. That's and I love you know, mm -hmm. hardcore Irish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean like corned beef and potatoes oh, yeah. Irish. Yeah. <laughs> like let's celebrate St. Patrick's day the right way. It's not just about green beer. Like we're having, you know, Irish fair. <laughs> was, so, was a, yeah. was a green beer really something that gets done in Ireland or. I don't think so. I don't think so at <laughs> all. I think means. it's kind of, yeah, I think it's kind of like the Cinco de Mayo stuff that people do. Yeah. Where they're like, oh, yes, we're being Mexican. I'm like, sister, uh, Taco Bell is not Mexican. No. <laughs> but I mean, even, you know, when you really think about it, like even the Tex-Mex food that we have here that is awesome, our stripes tacos are not yeah. really Mexican. Absolutely. You know? And it's, it's, again, it's that vibrancy that we have here. And I didn't recognize that until I left, you, don't. you, you don't. know, and I, I was so ignorant to the fact that my Mexican food here was Tex-Mex. I went to uh, Florida and the Mexican food that I had in Florida was from people that were from the interior of Mexico. Yeah. And it was a totally different type of food. When I lived in California, that's Baja California, Mexican yes. food. Like it's, isn't it so awesome? Varied. It's beautiful. You know, it's called Mexico también. You, know, you go to Mexico, there's different, di there's different dialects of Spanish. You know, I know they could, they tell us we're, we're mucho right here because, you know, but then I, I had a professor of Spain who spoke very proper Spanish. Like, Vosotros, nosotros, oh you know, and, and you're just like, What's this guy talking about, right? <laughs> but it just, it just depends what region you're from. And yeah. I think that yeah. what's awesome about here in the more, more, you know, just, this place is awesome. You realize that we've made it our own, you know, sort of the, 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 the people that had big shoes earlier came before us and sort of paved the way. And we're sort of making it our own on 956 and every day was going. We are. And you're a part of that trailblazer. <laughs> you're you, a part you. of that, man. You know, you are, you are the type of story that so often comes from the 956, you know, the first generation that is paving his way and, and experiencing things and coming and sharing all of that and showing people like, you know, I am one of, of many of us that have been able to do this. And that doesn't mean that I'm the only one that means that you can do it too. And in mm -hmm. that encouraging way. And I think that's one of the things that I, that I think is so awesome about you is you're so positive and you're, you're very positive, but you're also a realist. And Thank I think you. that's hard to find, you know? And so as a judge, because you're not just, Attorney Hector Bustos, thank you, ma'am. Judge Hector yes, Bustos, which is amazing. And as a judge, uh, let me ask you: so, do those experiences that you have had, and that realization, and that understanding, do those influence like your your experiences on the bench and the way that you make judgments, or are they not allowed to? How does that work? I, I'm curious. I, I, I think. Um... Ideally, they would they would want want to become un, to be unbiased, mm -hmm. but I think that our experiences in our life shape us. You said earlier very eloquently that they're 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 tied. You know, it's part of your DNA. You know, the way you're raised, yeah. the way who raises you, how you perceive the world. At least for me, I think that it's um, I'm, I'm very compassionate on the bench. I think that um, given where I come from, that's the one thing I will say. I I tend to err on the side of a lot of leniency <laughs> because I um, I can empathize with a lot of the people that come forward who have had very tough times or just struggling. And um, I think to me, it's important to find where the person's at. It's important to help give a lending hand to get him to where he needs to be. And I think that um, I'm going to continue being that way. I think that a lot of people say, ah, well, we'll judge, you know, you can't do that. They're lying to you. I said, well, yeah, but it's, it's, it's his trust to lose, not mine. I mean, my job is here to help people out. And I always tell people when they go to the court, you know, those two doors, you come in, expect to get help. You know, don't, you're not going to get here and be mistreated. You're not going to get here. I'm not going to make you feel worse than what you're feeling already. And, you know, God knows that you're here for a reason. You're, you're here because you had a bad day or you had a ticket or and you need some help. So I'm, I'm, 
I'm not going to harp on, on the obvious issues. And I think it's important to get the person out of the solution and out of the problem because problem, you know, every problem has a solution. You know, there's that that is the reality of life. Now, it's not the solution we want all the time, but <laughs> true. It's the solution, you know. And it's uh, you know, I, I I just want people to learn from it. And I think that coming to everyone to support, you'll find a compassionate judge that can see it from both sides. And and I you know, I wasn't raised with a silver spoon. And that's and, and that's not to take away from the people that are. Hey, if your parents have been able to do well, hey, awesome. You know, that just that just wasn't my experience. And um, and by, by no means do I mean that's a bad way because I've seen excellent people who have come from parents have done excellent, you know, they're they're just even better now. You know, I I, I think that um it's it's hard to get a judge to just completely one side. And um, I think it, it's I, I wouldn't want a judge just to be completely. Um, I, I don't want to say by the book. I don't want people to misconstrue that. But there's a lot of gray areas in the law. Yeah. You know, and I, I guess I could leave it at that. Um, I, so, as you are an esteemed legal mind and judge, to kind of lighten the mood. Okay. I mean, I'm lightening the mood, but these are some serious life questions. Let's get down to it. Real brass tacks. Okay. Okay. I need you to make a judgment. I need you to make a judgment. Prove your, your judging prowess to okay. me, sir. And I need you to settle some very long held disputes that right. have caused many an argument in my classroom, in my household. These are serious issues. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? here with a serious person. All right. You asked me what type of fuck was I like? Yes, ma'am. Now I need to ask you, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes every day. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> How, okay, I'm, I'm a nonpartisan. I am, I, I am interviewing you and you know, I respect, I respect that, that you can be wrong every once in a while. And, hey, and you know, it's okay. Hey, you know what? I, I, I tell my girlfriend every day, ma'am, I'm wrong every day twice on Sunday, man. <laughs> I said, fortunately, I, I have no problem being wrong. Man. <laughs> oh, man. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Pancakes. Wow. Can you justify your, your pancake position? Well, man, just um, soft, fluffy, lots of, uh, lots of pancake uh, uh, sauce. Um, I don't know. I just grew up with pancakes. Never really had, never really had waffles. Honestly, I could very, I can tell you the truth. My mom never did a waffle that. <laughs> Neither did mine. Yeah. My my mom. Well, she did. She tried. I want to say she tried like a few times after we had done like the La Quinta waffle thing. Sure. You know, the Texas shaped waffles. But I mean, I I'm I'm sure, man, I, I'm sure that it's very difficult to see, but I tend to be a waffle person. <laughs> I, I need that texture. That texture <laughs> instead of the 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 syrup soaked man oh man my, but either way see? either way drowned in syrup what can <laughs> you right especially blueberry pancakes okay you got me on that one because those have got right? some texture too that's that that's a that's a that's a good that's a good point hey there. back to your la quinta thing you know whenever we had the opportunity to stay at the hotel my mom wanted me to stay away from everything she was like we can't pay for it if you break it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like mom breakfast free you're not going down by yourself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. Well, as a mom to three boys, you'd be surprised. She probably <laughs> knew you had so much potential, not only to be <laughs> a trailblazing judge in your hometown, but also to break some stuff <laughs> as a child. Oh, good luck. Good luck with three three boys. Oh now. God. Yeah. It's 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 a, it's wild. It is wild. <laughs> Leave you me. They they are so funny, and then I have a penchant to break things. Also, sure. they uh, they love to say, "Mommy, mommy goes She Hulk," <laughs> because mommy breaks things all the time, and I don't even know how. I ripped the handle off of the microwave. 
Yeah. And they're like, mom. And I'm like, I just tried to open it. I don't know what to do. I don't know. <laughs> and so like, mommy, you she hulked again. And I, I bought my son a little, um, I don't, I can't see it. It's probably in this room somewhere, but there's a little gremlin because I'm a cool mom like that. Like cool. I'm raising them with eighties stuff. Cause it's awesome. Hey. Like, right. Are they so, watching Obi-Wan Kenobi? Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, um, they have a little gremlin, like they loved gremlins. So they have a little gremlin and I bought them a gremlin online. And so I'm like, oh, look, this is so cool. The arms even move. Hector, the arms did not move. <laughs> that arm got ripped off. My mom was <laughs> and it was fresh out of the package. And my poor son was horrified. <gasps> And, and what, she hulked and I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And it, and it was a gremlin. Which gremlin was it? Stripe. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it was the evil gremlin. So, like, technically, yeah, you right. it, right? Yeah. <laughs> My poor kid. I know. Okay. So, you're a pancake guy. All right. Yes, Here's another one movies or books? Books. I was That's just about to tell you, you know. Uh, <laughs> Well, one, I, I, I love to read. I read a lot. And, um, you know, it's one thing I, I think that, please, and I, I don't mean to tell them how to read, let your kids read. You know, it's it just makes you better. Read anything. You know, read just, everything. Yeah. Give yourself, I, I, you know, you look at a lot of studies and just people in general, motivational people, um, people that are intellects, people that are academia. At least 15 minutes reading a day just makes you, makes you that much smarter every single day. We're all born smart. And then I think that um, reading, it's no joke. Reading is fundamental. <laughs> Absolutely. It Absolutely. is. Absolutely. And, and it separates. It, 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 I, wish I, I, I wish I would have listened to my teachers when I was younger. It wasn't until, you know, undergrad and to law school that I really started, you know, reading, 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 and Law school was all reading, so that's no what problem. I was gonna say. Law school. I mean, there's so many people that go into law school that have a degree in English because of the, you know, it's imperative to be able to really delve into a case yeah, and to look at everything, and that's that's got to be huge. Is being able to read everything. Yes, it's, really a, it's a big, it's a big advantage. And I think that even you come to my room, I my girlfriend complains because I have these bookshelves and they're just books and books and books and. And uh, she's like, do I put this one? I was like, no, leave it there. I'm, I'm, I need to finish that one right there. And she's like, it's been there. I was like, there's a method of my madness. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it just, it's, it's imperative that, you know, like you said, the kids read. And um, we, we always talk about number one in the class, number two in the class. And, and I wish that we would spend some time with the people that are in the back of the end. And I bring this up for a reason. I bring it up because. The only difference between those people and the people that are number one is one work ethic and two, you know, get them to read. You know, once you start to read, I mean, think about the self sufficient uh, or the self awarding um, feelings you get. You know, you, you look at a book and most kids say, oh, that's a big book. Imagine when you, how you feel when you finish it. You know, there's this, there's this energy that goes to, man, I did it. And that's, that's just one, you know, one little exhibit of how important it is for these kids to read. You know, Absolutely. I, I really am a true believer in it. And hey, man, you get to get to learn something every day. Well, and creativity, you know, I mean, I myself am a very visual person. If I if I don't see it, I'm going to forget it. I'm terrible. I cannot do a book on tape for the life of me because I will totally zone out like I don't I don't I won't pay attention. And, you know, when you read, you see the words on the page but in your brain, you're visualizing and yes. you're creating that world. You're creating the visual aspect on your own. And I think that a lot of times when we have maybe a movie that's from a book, you know, sometimes I think nine times out of 10, people tend to say, oh, the book was better. And it's because it doesn't match your visualization of it. Yes. And But that's beautiful is that you literally create a world in your mind. And, and it's your world, right? Mm -hmm. it's, exactly. It's exactly. And so the the book is a vehicle to that, into creating that world for yourself, you know? You know, you know what I, I love about it too is that, you know, um, you know, you get one of those good books, you know, I like to write notes in them and 
And it's always good to go back and you reread or you're seeing, you're like, man, how was I feeling at that point of day in my life, right? Yeah. And then you have a completely different thought. You're like, yeah. oh, I don't see it that way anymore. Now that I kind of picked up on chapter one, and now, now you're like, oh, well, I don't see that anymore. And that's, I, I, I get a kick out of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I reread books all the time. I love it. It's not like a one and done type thing for me. I'm definitely like, let me revisit it again. Oh, I found these nuances. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's an allusion to this. I read this book that was by them. And so now I can connect the dots a little yeah. bit more. And I know that it's probably more fluff than what you read because you probably no, much I, more interest in much more academic books than I do. I got to be honest. I don't necessarily, I'm, I'm not like a, let me read this little biography of some. Yeah, I'm not really. I, I read a bunch of boring stuff, but right now I'm reading uh, Chasing Golden Sacks. Um, it's about how Golden Sacks create this culture of individuals who are basically like the compadre system. Mm. How they would hire their son, 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 son. And they had such a standard that they set. But early 2000s, they started to really care about just strictly numbers and how they brought in people who were very cutthroat, very. There was no reward system, and and it's the beginning of the end in terms of the financial crisis in regards how they put profit over over a healthy company. The company has been there for a hundred years, and they said they managed to ruin it, you know, in ten years. So wow, a, okay, I want you to read that. Uh, my last judgment. All right, somebody brings you a cake. Okay? okay, somebody brings you a cake. Is it iced with to make you happy? Is it iced with actual frosting or whipped cream? Uh, actual frosting. Yes. Yes. That's, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. Yeah. I gotta say, I gotta say this whole whipped cream frosting thing. Yeah. Devastating. devastating. Yeah. It's such a letdown. Like I get so excited. I'm a cake girl. Okay. I love cake. Love cake. Okay. Like, let me ask you a question. Yes. Nine, five, six. What's the best bakery? Oh my God, that's literally that's a tough one. That's so hard. That's so hard. Ah, you know, I like a lot of home bakers. Home bakers. So, like, there is a company called Sweet Impressions, and they do some amazing work. I know um, Christie's Christie's cakes. Christy Valderas. Yes. Um, Mike, Mike's sister. Yeah, yeah. So Christy Balderas yeah, has some. Oh my God, her cakes are phenomenal. Her cakes are amazing. Um, so I tend to like a lot more of those like home bakers Good that, deal. that are mm -hmm, hey. like the smaller businesses. Um, I know, like I love RGV Cupcake Factory. Um, and again, that's that's a small business, but it's also kind of like bigger business, I guess. If you could, you yeah, could I mean, say, hey, kind of made it big time. time. Yeah, they're, 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 they're the food food <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you, you, you might kind of lose the cred as a small business. A little, um, yeah, let me say to you, and, and, and I want to throw this claim out there before I say this I don't believe anything good came out of COVID, but I do think that it encouraged people to sort of, sort of um, pursue their, their, I don't want to say side hustle, but what they really like to do. And I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of bakers yeah. out there, a lot of people who, oh, who yeah. started working on what they really love to do. Yeah. And that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Um, all right. So let's do our rapid fire. All right. Shall we? Okay. So rapid fire, three things, three favorite foods. Speaking of food. Pizza, carne guisada, y arroz con pollo. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. All right. Three best things about living in the RGV. The food, the people, my family. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right. Here's my last one. The three best pieces of advice you can give our viewers. Three pieces of advice. One, don't be scared. Don't be scared to film. We all fell our way to the top. Oh, I like number, that. Number two, um, don't put yourself down. Enough people do that already. And number three, um, believe in yourself, surround yourself with positive people. Positive influence is everything. You need that inertia, you need that energy in yourself and surround yourself by positive people. That's that's the, the secret to everything. And I know you said three, but four. And 
and work your butt off. Just work. Keep your head down, work. Don't worry about the person right or left to you. Keep on working hard. I've never seen anyone work hard and have a bad life. You know, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. So continue working hard. That is awesome. Thank you so much. No Thank problem, you so man. much. You have been inspiring and you have definitely, um, I think you've given so much to the community. Oh, thank you, man. And um, to, you know, our peers, our children, our family, like to everybody. And I really appreciate all of your work. No, thank you, ma'am. Um, thank you for having me on. This is my first podcast, ma'am, as a, I, I always say I didn't want to be a politician, but I guess I am now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny. My mom says, did you say this a couple years back? I was like, yeah. What you say? I said, uh, but um. Thank you. It was a pleasure being on for you and your husband. Um, I've known you all for some time already. You guys are wonderful people. Continue being that way. Continue molding the minds of the youth. Um, continue being a great mother just from our little conversation. I know we had spoke a long time, but um, I know that you've worked hard. I've known sort of, I've known sort of your story in regards to where you've been and where, you, where you're headed. So I expect nothing but the best from you all. Um, and uh, tell your mother I said hi and to everybody else. Thank you for hearing us out and uh, Hopefully they can get invited back again. With Jennifer, thank you. God bless you. And um, if you ever need anything in the court or any legal advice or anything, you know, I'm a phone call away. Thank you so much. You thank you. Right? And if, likewise, if you ever need anything educational, <laughs> I don't no, know absolutely. how much I can help. Hey, but if you ever need anything, period, we're you, always here. You know, I, I say this, and I say this in full candor. Um, people are like, hey, you know, I'm like, Whenever I need something to do with education, I call someone that's in the education field. I said, whenever I need a baker, I don't call a plumber. You know, I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm old enough and I think I'm a little, uh, a little smart enough to understand that I only know legal stuff. <laughs> Other than that, that's not my professional uh, job or expertise. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, divert to the teacher and to the people who do it on everyday basis. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure. And have a fabulous day. You too, ma'am. Adios. <laughs> and you have a good day, ma'am. And tell your husband I said hi. I will, for sure. Right. Thank have you. Bye.